make the most of your organic gardening experience with the world's first self-growing planter. All you do is add soil, seeds, or plants and walk away for the rest of the year. Our planters will germinate your seeds and grow your plants. Torpedo Pot's microbial organic growing process is designed to give plants incredible texture, refreshing scent, beautiful colors, and delightful flavors. Torpedo Pot is fully automated and uses over 95% less water to grow a lot more nutritious food. Check out our website, www.torpedopot.com, and order yours today. Hey fam, welcome back to the African Diaspora News Insider. I am Wangil Zalalem, bringing you the story. Today I'm taking you way back to 21 years ago. We are going to talk about Eric, Eric the Eel. That was a nickname given to him by fans after he got the slowest record for the 100 meter swimming competition in the Olympics. He almost drowned while competing. The story is really interesting. The reason why I want us to talk about him is it's not only interesting, but also it shows us what it means to have bad leadership. So let me tell you what exactly happened. Eric has no experience in swimming. Three months before the Olympics competition, he had no idea. One day he heard on radio that Equatorial Guinea is recruiting or looking for swimmers to represent Equatorial Guinea in the Olympics. So he's like, sounds like fun, sounds easy enough. And he goes there to apply. When he reached the place, there was no one in sight except for him and one other lady. She was competing for the women's team, he was competing for men. So he was told, jump in the pool and swim. So he said he jumped and he started moving his uh, hands and legs. So the guy told him, okay, come out, you are chosen. You're going to represent Equatorial Guinea in the Olympics. He gets happy, he goes home and he started researching about the Olympics. This guy didn't even know what the Olympics was, so he went to the library and started researching. So he realizes that he needs to prepare. He finds this guy that works at a hotel and asks him if he can train him. The guy tells him, okay, whenever there are no clients, no customer, I can teach you six, from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. He agrees, he goes home and they start their training. After a few months uh, of him training him, he also trained himself, um, he said, in the crocodile infested river. So he felt prepared. When the time came, he travels uh, to where the Olympics was then and he sees the pool. He says in his life, he's never seen that kind of pool before. It was huge so he was like how am i going to swim across this pool so he sees other people he understands right away he was not prepared so the day before he's supposed to compete he calls his mom and he tells her i don't think i'm prepared um but his mom motivates him and other people around him motivate him as well so he goes out there to compete so the south african coach sees him and he was like what are you wearing he tells him i got the shorts from a second hand store in equatorial guinea so he tells him so the coach was shocked and he was like no they will disqualify you if they see the shorts so come let me give you the right gear so he gives them the gear so we need to mention the south african coach he was awesome to do this and that's part that was his competition but he didn't care he wanted to help a brother out so he goes there and the competition starts he starts swimming and he realizes that he cannot finish it because it was so hard for him and he said he, he couldn't feel his hands and legs and he starts drowning because this is the longest he he's ever swam so when he was about to give up he hears the crowd cheering for him so he says i I don't even know where I got the courage from. I started swimming and I finished. Even though he, in the Olympic circuit, he's the slowest <laughs> um, swimmer in 100 meter men's swimming competition. 
he still finished and he was so proud and happy and he was nicknamed Eric the Eel. So that's how the name came about and also that's how this record is held by him. But fortunately for him after that he had lots of fans that supported him and also he got endorsement as well as he became the coach for Equatorial Guinea swimming team. So this is a success story obviously but let's talk about the leadership not even at the government level imagine at the federation sports federation level for them to not even put in work to find that person that can swim that can you know they didn't even vet him they just saw the first person that came granted he was the only one that applied that day they just gave it to him they just gave him the spot and this guy could have died this could have turned out bad he could have drowned he could have hurt himself but um they the leadership didn't seem to care they just gave the spot to him and he went and the rest is history but fortunately for him he turned this into a success story and he's well off now but still you know this shows you what bad leadership can do because they took it so lightly that person is a representation of equatorial guinea when they go and compete in the olympics they are representing their country that's a huge deal but they didn't give it much thought so that's something that i thought worth talking about since the olympics is going on right now anyways do let us know down below what your thoughts are about eric the ill i am angel zalal i'm bringing you the story i'll see you on the next one bye if you are over the age of 35 stop everything you're doing right now after a lifetime of eating fatty foods you may run the risks of a stroke or heart attack due to plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. To learn how you can reduce your risks, visit youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856 today. This may be a life-changing call for you or someone you love. Thank you and we hope to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and download the African Diaspora News Channel app, now available on Google Play and the Apple App Store.